Welcome to another tech video. So today we're going to be having a look at this HP ProBook. It's a Core i5 machine, really slow apparently. So um, they'd like us to put a, a new copy of Windows on here. So we're going to open it up. If it's got a mechanical hard drive in, then we're going to change that out for an SSD and then we're going to do a fresh Windows 10 install. Okay, so the first thing on this uh, notebook is we just turn it over, we're going to remove the battery. So this is a, a raised battery that lifts the, the back off the desk and then you've got an air intake under here. So let's pop the battery out. And once the battery is removed, it's a really nice simple mechanism to get in. Um, this big panel here in the center comes off. So all we do is we're gonna put the two battery switches in that flips the cover down and then that can be removed like that. A really, really simple way of getting in. Okay, so inside here, we've got a slightly dusty fan. So let's uh, give that a bit of a, just a little bit of a clean. We'll give that a blow out in a minute. Okay. That is now cleaned out. So under here, looks like we've got our mechanical drive. So we want to remove this and we're gonna be replacing this with uh, a two and a half inch SSD drive, which should sort any performance issues out with that being able to run Windows 10. We're not gonna put Windows 11 on here, but we are gonna put Windows 10 on and then if they want to upgrade it, they can. If it'll allow it, probably won't. Okay, so we're going to remove the drive. And then we've just got four screws on the side of the disc to remove. And just want to make sure, make a note of which way in the drive goes. So that you don't have to change it, which I've uh, done a few times. So this is probably going to be, it's either going to be a 500 or a one terabyte drive, probably a one terabyte, maybe. Let's have a look. Okay, that's 500 gig, so that can come out, went in that way. We're going to take our 480 gig drive, SSD drive. That's going to go in the same way. And then we're just going to pop the screws back in. Okay, so that's the four screws mounted. And then we can just take this and that will slide back into place. And only go in one way. And there we go. Tuck that under there. And then we've got our four little screws just to hold that in place. There we go. And then the cover can go back on. And the battery can go back in. And then the next thing we want to do is just get that connected to some power. And then we're going to take our Windows 10 boot installation media. Connect that into the USB port. And then see if this then boots to enable us to load Windows. Let's try it. So I'm just going to plug in an HDMI out, see if I can capture this. If I can't, then just have to take my word for it and we'll, uh, we'll show you afterwards. So power on, hit escape on an HP and that will then bring up the boot menu. Okay, so that's worked. So we can now just sort of step through the process uh, of getting Windows installed. And then once that's done, we'll just come back and we'll have a look at the uh, specifications of the machine itself. 
Okay, so that install's completed now. So we're now going to remove the USB drive and we're going to restart the machine. Once that's booted back up, then uh, we'll go in. There's a few things that we need to do. So first of all, we're going to have a look at the hardware, see, what, see what's in here. Then we're going to go to the hp.com slash support website and we're going to install um, any drivers that, that we need, including BIOS updates. So they're important. And then once that's done, we're going to run Windows updates and then we can come back and have a quick tour of the system, if you like. Okay, let's tip the screen up so we can see what we're doing. So we're just running uh, a detection at the moment to identify the product. We already know it's a notebook. Well, then we're going to go into the drivers. Looks like uh, Windows Display is getting in. So it's an HP ProBook 450G0. Okay, so from running the, uh, the update, we can see that we've got a BIOS install to do. So all we're going to do is we're going to click on on the laptop, download and install. And then we're just going to follow through the wizard here, accept the terms of the agreement. And then we're going to click on next, update the BIOS on this computer. So we're at F63 at the moment, we're going to F69. So that's the BIOS red, and then it will flash the new version. There we go. Okay, and that's us finished updating the BIOS. Now the system's gonna restart. Okay, and upon restart, it writes the, uh, the boot block and gives another reboot. And there we are, we're booted back into Windows. All right, so we've got the output working now. So the next thing we wanna do, let's go and get some icons on the desktop and then we'll have a look at the system again. All right, so we want to go in and <clears throat> have a look at the system. Okay, so it's a third gen Core i5 running at uh, 2.6 gigahertz, uh, eight gig of RAM. All right, so that's not too bad. So before we go in and have a look at our device manager, which we can do, just to see what didn't install. Everything's installed correctly. Okay, so that's good. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna to go to Windows Update. And we're gonna continually run Windows Update until um, no more updates can be applied. Okay, so that's all of the win Windows updates uh, completed. Let's now go ahead and have a look at the system. So if we go up to uh, Home and then System and then scroll down to about. So here's our specification. So it's picked up that it was Windows 10 Pro. Let's have a look to make sure that um, it's showing as activated, although it should do. Try that again. Activation. See if Windows is activated. Yep, okay, so that's perfect. Um, so that's all activated using the original HP uh, key that this came with and let's now just give it a quick reboot and check the speed of startup so we'll just give it a quick reboot so let's have a look at the sort of snappiness of things so this is the thing this is the first time it's opened since an update but that's fairly quick all seems to be working all right. Let's try Notepad. Yep, it seems fairly snappy. Let's open up the internet and go to something like, I'll confirm that, accept. Okay, 
Okay. So in terms of uh, speed of applications, um, seems all right in terms of performance for opening and closing bits and pieces. So that is pretty much it done now. The next thing that we want to do is we now want to have a look at the data, get the data from the old mechanical drive onto the system. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to be using our Fideco tool. We're going to plug that into power, not that you need it, of course, for a SATA drive, but uh, we always do with the mechanical drives. We're going to connect our mechanical drive to the SATA adapter, and then we're going to plug this in over this side into a spare USB port. And let's just make sure that it's all switched on. So this one, there's an on-off switch down here. So we're going to flip that across. That should light up and then we can plug that in. And then Windows should then pick up that we've got the drive installed. Auto play settings kicking in. Okay, so there we go. So we've got recovery tools, system and windows. So we want our windows partition. We're gonna to go to users and we're going to go to the one that we want and then we've got to click on continue to permanently get access to this folder which we're going to which we're going to do and windows is then going to go through and associate everything under there with the current user that we are logged into this laptop with and then that will enable us to copy and then paste the um, data from the mechanical hard drive onto the new ssd drive so once that's um, detected the folders, we will come back and carry on. And then once we've got access to the file system, as you can see here, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take everything. So we do control C, and then we're gonna to go to our C drive. And we're gonna simply paste everything in. <clears throat> Going to say replace the files and the destination. Okay, that's it. Okay, receipts in there, that's fine. So that's all the data transferred over. Now, all we need to do is simply we're going to click on eject the drive and then we can remove the drive once the light goes red, which it has done. There we go. And that's all there is to it. So this can now be returned to the client after we've given it a good clean. So if you found that video useful, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Just want to say thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.